G'day guys, this is Captain Noob here with the Tri-Shot Handmade Rifle. This nuclear weapon here is one of the most powerful weapons in the game in terms of an automatic assault rifle type weapon, so we should be doing pretty well on it with the double upping, uh, doubling up on two-shot. Although it, it comes at the cost of extra recoil, which you would be able to see if you're used to using this weapon, but I'm going to be controlling the recoil to the best of my ability to make sure it's less noticeable than you'd think. It's heaps easy to do this on a PC rather than a console because pulling down on the mouse a little bit as you fire is not a very difficult task at all. As you can see here, this weapon is silenced, which means when it comes to it, we can do lots of sneak attack crits to maximize our damage potential. And the damage itself, we obliterated that last room full of gunners very, very easily indeed, so it's going to be a very nice weapon to use in Gunners Plaza. So, rounding the corner here. Now, we do have a long barrel and a long recoil compensating stock on this, so it's not going to be completely optimized for any um, bats combat, but we won't really need it, as you can see. Bloody mess picks up that second kill there, which is pretty neat. For those who haven't seen that in action, there you go. That's what happens. They fall apart with your enemy. So, rounding the corner here to the last couple of gunners. Miss the, lamp, miss the melee gunner, so we'll swing back and kill her once we get the chance. We'll just clear out this mob first, and then we'll move on to that. Knock her out. Take this dude, and then we'll use the remainder of our bullets, and we'll shoot that guy. Alright, just now need to move on to the gunner up here so we'll quickly head up there the nice rate of fire on this as well is going to help out our damage potential quite a bit damage output I should say so with that that's about it for the living gunners now we just got to finish off those turrets and then we'll move on to some monsters so I've got this fitted with its uh, camo from the operators which looks the nicest it makes the weapon all nice and clean which I don't know it makes me think it's going to be a little bit more reliable since it's well maintained and it just simply looks better and the glow sights on it are optional but I chose them just because they look cool going with the reflex sight will help you out in VAT so if that's more of your game be sure to do that we'll move on to some monsters now and see how this thing can do Alright, so here's a big super mutant dumbass we all know as Swan. Let's go put him out of his misery again for today. So we'll just start off shooting him, getting the sneak attack crits, and we should be okay to get him in just a few mags. The sneak attack crits are definitely piling on the damage, as well as the base damage of this weapon, which is already great, as you can see. And we ended up slaughtering him in under 30 seconds. So let's move on to another monster, shall we? Alright, so we've headed up north once again, and we're in Deathclaw territory, so let's go see how the tri-shot handmade rifle does against giant Deathclaws. First things first, we need to detect him. That's him over there, just under the overpass there. Looks like the gunners around there have sort of caught their attention, so while they're distracted on the gunners, it's a good as time as any to just get a few hits in. Might as well get a little bit of hits in in vats while we can. Don't have perfect accuracy on the belly of the beast, but we can use crits to guarantee those hits. Might as well spam a few crits in there just to get an initial good striking on him. One thing I don't like about doing lots of criticals is that you actually slow down your firing of the weapon because of the camera decides to be all cinematic. So you actually would be much quick with, quicker if you used that in the normal shots, which is kind of upsetting because I like to get all my shots off as soon as possible because that prevents giant death claws from chasing you around and picking you up and throwing you to the ground. Okay, so we're surrounded by all the death claws in the world here, so we'll make a tactical hasty retreat and we'll try and fight him from a more advantageous spot down here. Okay, there's another Deathclaw over there. Looks like if we can lose them, we can gain sneak attack criticals on them and boost our damage potential for ever so highly. Um, okay, he's coming down here. He has a vague idea of where I am. They go to the place where they know you were last, so... Let's maybe hide in these bushes here and try to take them down. I've got one Deathclaw over there, but now I've attracted the big one's attention, which is kind of scary. 
but we've got a tri shot handmade rifle here, so we're struggling, uh, well, not struggling with the damage output. We just need to run away and make sure he doesn't hit us again like he's done there. He's a quick bastard, this one. Relentless. Okay, looks like we're in nerd rage mode, and we'll use this time to obliterate him. There we go. Getting that initial damage in is great once you are low enough to actually execute that. As you can see there, it's in a really effective way of uh, to really effective get out of jail for free card, so that's nice. And look at the size of those claws. You have to be one tough gal to take one of those and keep running around like nothing happened. We'll move on to another monster. Alright, so back south we are, and interestingly clear weather for this part of town. Usually it's nice and rainy here when I fast travel down here, but next on the shit list today is this Wendigo looking dude, so we'll go ahead and mag dump him and try to get all the bullets on him. And as he's running at us like that, we'll go ahead and hit him in the head in vats just to do a little bit of damage and to knock his remaining few teeth out. And we'll use the impressive mag capacity of this weapon to finish him off with lots and lots of bullets. So that's it for this little guy. We'll move on to a little something a little bit more tanky now and we'll call Last it a day. monster that will fall today is this giant Milo Queen over here. Now she's quite the sniper so the minute we start shooting her or the second we start shooting her we're going to start backing off because we'll endure the worst acid rain if we continue to sit in one spot. So it's best for us to back off as we shoot her because those acid spouts are more accurate than Swan's bloody boulder throws, I'll tell you that much. And if you're familiar with that, yeah, you know you're in for a treat when this one spits her acid at you. Plus, it, the damage over time is actually pretty nasty too. So even for the two-shot, two-shot um, handmade rifle here, or the tri-shot, doesn't matter what you call it, you can see that while we're hitting her a lot, you can see that the thing actually is tanking a lot of the damage and looks like we've got a visitor. Go away, Mr. Goo. And now she's all nice and butated, which means... She's going to be hitting harder, so hopefully dropping her nice and fast soon. But the worst thing that could possibly happen at this point is her to get a massive punch in with her claws, which is going to be hard to avoid if she runs at the same speed as us. Luckily for us, we can outpath her because she's a big dumb crab, and also we've got two times speeding. I mean, sprinters uh, armor on, so we can run 20% faster than usual which I highly recommend for any armor setup because the ability to run fast is nice. Looks like we've been kicked into nerd rage and we shall turn and burn this Mylurk Queen. Hopefully nothing else gets in our way when we're doing this. Almost made that happen with the lobster over there. Not able to completely finish her off, but hopefully in this vats run we can do that looks like we should be able to, then we'll just have to clear out the rest of the, this crabby rabble, and that's it. So, these albino Mylurk hunters are the auto-scaling uh, variants and the strongest lobsters you'll find, but they're no challenge for the tri-shot handmade rifle. Alrighty, I think we're all clear, and on that note, that's about it for this particular weapon. If you like this weapon or would like to use it, make sure you've got the Nuka World DLC first, and then go and head to the description where you'll find a link to this mod, whichever platform you're on. Don't worry if you're on console, this one's for you too. Thanks for watching, guys.